Some of the most brilliant minds in business and finance from across the blockchain sphere are in this room right now. Creating a protocol, trying to solve a business issue of operability and interoperability for, for basically for the issuance of tokens and ultimately the seamless trading of tokens. For thousands of years, we've been involved in consensual change, but there's always a problem of trust. But the advent of blockchain businesses will go across all market sectors all market sectors, and it's not a U.S. phenomenon, it's not a New Zealand phenomenon, it's a worldwide phenomenon. What's so beautiful about a blockchain-based capital market is all those settlement, all that settlement mischief becomes impossible. Everything comes back to interacting with some type of user experience because we're dealing with this esoteric, intangible technology. And you know, with the rise of things like the CME and CBOE futures contracts, it really started to uh, be the beginnings of this asset class being institutionalized. The problem is not, is it a utility or is it a security? It's the problem is that the current framework is absolutely inefficient to deal with this technology. And, but what is blocking them from investment? Because this is not new. Everybody has been talking about it for years. Right? When, are, when are finally the hedge funds and the venture capital funds and the high net worth individuals in China, when are they really moving in on mass? Talking about the other four billion people in the world that are not part of the economy, right? they're going to be entering into this economy. Because we go to T0, uh, you reduce all the capital needs that need to buffer the different points in the settlement system as it exists. You reduce systemic instability. There is a, uh, an infrastructure which is different to the one that we currently have. Um, that is going to support the mass tokenization of all different kinds of assets. Everything will be tokenized, everything of value will be tokenized some point in the future. I think it starts in private, public equities, bonds, warrants, the uh, financial instruments people are used to. I believe you can have a compliant system in place, but still allowing peer-to-peer -peer transfers of securities. We build products and services using blockchain technology and security tokens can certainly be one of them, where you don't even know you're using the blockchain at all. We wanted to create universal standard and to implant this universal standard in smart uh, contracts. I just look at the top 20 cryptos right now in a, you know, in a list of, of just network value. And I think to myself, some of these are in the wrong order. We have a way of sending value across the wire without a middleman. And what you see are actually patterns of cooperation. What can we create with this technology that we couldn't create before you know, blockchain came about? Because that is the coalescing squares, that is the traditional world actually blending seamlessly with the new world. I think we just start by tokenizing everything and seeing what happens because it's kind of a wave that some things are going to work and some things aren't as well. For the identity industry, what we're predicting is that we will eventually see the death of centralized storage. The commoditization or the democratization of compute, you know, it allows people to do this stuff and it's that democratization that I think is so critical. I wish that in this blockchain ecosystem that all the polarity and toxicity will be eradicated. So Bitcoin kind of comes along and exposes everyone to what is a blockchain, really. I mean, where, is the, where is the contract? Is it in the code? Is it in the words? Is it somewhere in between? The drawback is that um, now you've got to manage your own keys. And then along comes Ethereum, when all of a sudden you realize that this is now a three-dimensional prospect. You know, can you, with a stroke of a pen, uh, put a token on the Articles of Association of a company and make it have all the same rights and confer the same advantages as an ordinary stock. Within the token economy, I believe that a handful of individuals are no longer going to be the ones that drive a company or a vision. Control 
whenever there are conversations about self-sovereign identity, it's nearly always about giving control back to individuals. Um, Singapore is quite proactive, so they normally um, ask um, participants in the market to they have these consultative papers. So. These things are securities. Anytime that you invest in something, whether it be public or private, and you take someone's money, I think the ability to have liquidity, transparency, and do that at a premium is what the token has to offer. Blockchains have like usually a few legs to them, and every blockchain out there is missing one of the few legs. And the innovation is going to have to come from this room in places like this, where we build the tools and test it and make the mistakes. This market is going to become a $6 trillion market by 2025. They're used to seeing 5Xs, and they're somewhat okay with their money depreciating by 90% in a few months. I believe that for a company to be successful, it must welcome as many different types of people and grant them the ability to contribute to its value. It became apparent that identity was the thing that needed to be solved. I was hoping a, a more um, global standards in, in a regulatory framework. You've either got to deregulate uh, finance, not going to happen, or you have to wait, find a way to make finance smarter. Because traditionally you had equity, mezzanine, de debt, um, and now obviously you've got the tokens and a whole range of token structures as well. And the regulators are seeing this is actually going to do a bunch of the things that they want to do. In the background, it's running the world, right? So in a lot of ways, Linux actually succeeded broader than people imagined. It just wasn't in the same way they thought. I think the Series B through E rounds in venture and private equity will be displaced by tokens. In Japan, we're tokenizing a, a winery in, in France. And even the gaming and gambling and exchanges and wallet areas, there's still fewer than 500 apps in that space as well. So this market that we're going into is big enough for everybody to win. Something. Because IP, intellectual property, and licensing market is more than three trillion dollars annually and grow very quickly. The trustlessness and true peer to peer, that's revolutionary. Like, we've never had that before. You know, we were never able to do that before. And I don't think the public really gets that, right? No, they still think PayPal is like peer to peer, right? There's going to be tokenized asset classes that are going to be accredited only high net worth individuals. It's practical and it's worldwide and it's scalable and it's going to, it, that will just that, but that little change is what's going to allow it to become a real market where it wasn't a real market before. And I have a dollar to spend. I've got to go where my information is the, is the strongest and best. I believe the launch of Bitcoin is a foreshadowing of a huge industry. And, and if you think the only opportunity is in finance, you're fucking crazy. I've learned a good bit in this conference. The conversations that we've had around security tokens uh, alone I believe is the, the biggest effort this industry's had as a collective group of vendors and issuers coming together to discuss interoperability. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, quality over quantity. One of the most inspiring conferences that I've been. Mind-boggling. Information overload on a really good night. Security, security, security. Ready, ready. Best conference ever. The people here are really the cream of the cream of the uh, of, of the crypto environment, uh, especially at the moment. Topics are very on topic, so yeah, good, congratulations to you guys. Real, real, really well done. I'm a tech guy, so it's nice to see how the other half operates, the business side of things. Yeah. Uh, inspiring, yeah. exciting, and thought provoking. Fantastic, intimate, and awesome. This, this and the Satoshi Roundtable are the most high octane, condensed groups I've ever seen. So, great confidence.